So what happens if your subject thinks they're going to lose the opportunity to take action? Let's talk about the scarcity principle in tip number 51 and 101 tips for interviewers and interrogators. Hey, welcome back. Stan Walters here with you with 101 Tips for Interviewing and Interrogation. Tip number 51. We're still covering our section on ethical persuasion tactics. Let me give you a quick review again what's happening. This is based on a lot of the work of Dr. Robert Cialdini. Matter of fact, I know it's a tough name to spell, so I'll put it down here at the bottom for you so you can see it. And also some of the work of a guy named Bob Berg talks about the use of influence. This concept of persuasion tactics has been used and been applied for 60 plus years, more if you look back and look at some of its first early starting points. And that's what we're capitalizing on. It's called judgmental heuristics. Judgmental heuristics. When we have a problem arise and we, we uh, resort to tactics or resort to systems that help us solve the problem, we develop a mental shortcut. That shortcut is, means you don't have to go through the whole decision making model or process or the whole rigmarole all over again. You're just uh, taking a shortcut because you knew it worked in the past. That's what persuasion tactics are. One of those involves the, the process of a principle called scarcity. People are never more moved into action when they think one or two things is going to happen. Time is running out. There's a limited number of a certain object or they will lose the opportunity. Okay, look at it again. Time is running out the window of opportunity is closing, or they'll lose that chance of ever making that decision or taking that action again. We can use this with interviewing a subject. Remember our rule, never, ever, ever lie to a subject when using these tactics. Never do this. We're talking about persuasion and not manipulation. To lie is to manipulate the subject and borders over toward the coercion side. So we're not going to lie to the subject. But here's how we do it. For example, let me give you a couple examples. What do you see happening a lot of time at the end of infomercials? Um, three days only, right, for a car sale. Uh, first 10 callers. And you can see that stupid commercial for three years, and it still says, next 10 callers. You think at some point in three years, they found the 10 callers. But with such a powerful trigger, it moves people to action. When do students work the hardest on their term papers or study for their final exams? Ta -da, the night before. Many of them must have really good disciplined students. When do people work on their taxes? Very short end, okay? We're going to apply that principle in an interview. Here's how we will do it ethically. You can now you combine these principles with others. You don't use them all. Some will just kind of fall in your lap. For example, I was interviewing a subject in a homicide case. And at one point he made the comment that he hated for his granny to hear about this before she died. Now, this is about 90 or so minutes into the interview. He gave me a scarcity principle. Now, I said to him, I'm sorry, David, I know your granny was sick. Is it bad? He said, yeah, they don't expect her to last more than a couple more days. And here's how I use the scarcity principle. David, wouldn't it be better when granny passed on, she was at peace, knowing even though her grandson did make a mistake, that he finally did do the right thing. That's how we use it. So we might say to the subject, you know, uh, I only have an opportunity to do one, uh, uh, talk to you this one time. I've got to collect the rest of these cases before it goes to the grand jury. I think it's only fair to give the person an opportunity to give their side of the story. I want to make sure that you get this one opportunity before something else happens. What I want to do is for the person to understand that the outcomes are in their hands. And it is. And so I need to point out to them the benefits as well as the negatives of what possibly could happen. So, for example, with David, he wanted to, his granny to hear about it, didn't want her to, afraid to hear about it, hear about it, but he needed to take care of it before she passed on. So he would, if it, she passed on, he would have to live with it. He never told her. If he told her, it could be, she could be satisfied and go happy. Or that the subject, you know, this is the one opportunity you have uh, to talk about what happened. Now, I'm not asking, I don't say to, to, for you to confess. That's not it. I want to hear your part of the story. I want the, you to have this opportunity to everybody hear it from you before the rumors start. We've got a limited time. I have to get a report to the boss, to the lieutenant, to the prosecutor, to the U.S. attorney by the end of the day. Or uh, this is the one chance before this case gets passed on to someone else, and I want them to know your side of the story. Think of how you can 
ethically use the scarcity principle to show the subject that there is a point, there is a deadline, that there is an end point where they may miss the opportunity. Again, don't lie to them, don't make up evidence that's unethical and will screw this case up. But you can use it now, again, you want to use it every opportunity, you have to use it in every single interview, but it's a very effective persuasion tactic. Glad to be with you. Be sure to hit the like button. Please hit the like, and if you would, very much, very pleased if you pass this along, send the link over to Twitter, to your Facebook link, uh, to your uh, YouTube link, uh, to your uh, LinkedIn section. I'm trying to get this, these, this course out to as many people as I can. Be sure that you subscribe. Be sure to visit theliguy.com. Got some great online resources, on-demand resources. I've got some new webinars that are coming up that I'll tell you about coming up pretty soon that you want to get involved in. And let you know about those, and you can find those and information on theliguy.com. Good to see you again. This is Stan Walters. Be safe. See you back when we did number tip 52.